Hey, deserving listeners, 90 Day Fiance, let's watch. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. This is Psychology in Seattle. And as I always say, everything that I say is completely speculative based on very little information. And I should say that it's my opinion. So just keep that in mind, let's watch. So I have this option, which one do you like? Um, just choose one. Uh, maybe this one? Okay, I'm taking the red one, thank you. I've been in Panama for a week now, and yesterday was the most dramatic. So I don't know what we just saw, but she laid out three garments, and she said, pick one. He's like, I don't know. She's, he's like, she's like, pick one. He picks one, and then she's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll bring that. And then that means I'm going to bring another one. So that's a classic, I think, if I understood that right, a passive aggression. You have aggressive, hostile intent towards someone, but you can't communicate that directly, so you do it passively through an action like that. I think that's what we saw. Sometimes people say playing games. So I have this option. Which one do you like? Um, Just choose one. Uh, maybe this one? Okay, I'm taking the red one. Thank you. Right, that's what it looked like, but such an interesting behavior <laughs> uh, to pick one but then you're still bringing something anyway it, it's an interesting behavior we'll add that to the catalog of behaviors from jasmine so you um your friends didn't invite me tonight it's i know you said it baby no man you cannot go i'm i'm celebrating that i'm divorced i don't want you to be part of that okay that's fine so I have to get ready by. Okay, so he was sort of passively communicating that he wanted to come, and she's saying, no, I don't want you to come. It's just for women, no men, and it's celebrating me getting divorced. All right, and he says, okay, he seems like a little disappointed, but he says, okay. Go to a club, but there is a COVID curfew here in Panama City. So my friends just book a separate suite at the hotel to celebrate. I cannot even count how many mental breakdowns I had during the divorce. And I'm just done with my past. I'm ready to welcome a future with Gino. All right, who knows what that means? But she said, I don't know how many mental breakdowns I had during my divorce. Given what we've seen thus far, a strong hypothesis, I would have to ask her if any of this made any sense is that she was relationally traumatized growing up to an extent that she has internalized a, a working model of others that other people cannot be trusted, that they're in a constant, there's a constant risk of other people abandoning you and leaving you or abusing you, rejecting you, and that you are inherently rejectable. And unless you work really, really hard and amp up your emotions subconsciously, such that you alert everyone around you that they will never abandon you and that any sign of abandonment you will call out, even if it doesn't really exist, then you will not be safe if you don't do all those things. And, but you're on this constant uh, edge, you know, you're the, on the edge of a cliff worrying at any moment that you're gonna fall off the cliff into the abyss of abandonment. And so it's not a pleasant way to live. And then as you're going through a relationship, a marriage, you're gonna get triggered. You're gonna see abandonment where it doesn't exist. And then when there is abandonment, you're going to react very strongly. There's going to be a lot of feelings and a lot of anger and a lot of fighting and a lot of distorting. And who knows what's going on with the other person in the relationship. And through a divorce, you could have a lot of turmoil. <gasps> Hola. So I don't know how this person identifies gender-wise, but if he does identify as a man, he certainly is masculine presenting, then either she didn't expect him to be there because she said Gino couldn't come because there were going to be no men, or she was lying to Gino, which is a big yikes. Sorry. 
Ven, ¿cómo estás? Yo estoy bien. Con mi ex, como quien tú claro, digas, te demonio claro. te invoco. She's saying he, my ex, invoked the demons in me. And I would suspect that that's in line with the hypothesis around abandonment and betrayal trauma that gets triggered and the deep, deep wounds of complex PTSD and other personality disorder foundations get massively triggered. You have a massive hurt and p actual physical pain. Emotional pain is the same as physical pain in, in the brain. And then you feel like, wait, why did you do this to me? Because it feels a hundred times worse than it probably should have or would have if you weren't relationally traumatized growing up. And you get very angry and then you push the other person away and then they further abandon you and it's the volatile. And there's a tendency for people in this situation because you go into that mode, the partner becomes all bad. And then there are times when things are going okay, where you are so desperate for closeness, you're so desperate for, because you've never had it in your life, that the person, your attachment figure, your partner becomes all good the way that a child will see their parents. Children are undifferentiated in that way. The parent is either all good or all bad. And that's normal for a six, 18 month old child to be like. Hopefully they're most in the moments of the all good, but occasionally, you know, you're all bad. Like when you put them down for a nap and they don't want to, or you take away your cell phone because you're like, you can't play with my cell phone or whatever it is, you become evil, you become horrible. And they can't reconcile the fact that you're mostly good and sometimes annoying. So when you retain that because of abandonment and lack of emotional development early in life, then your partner becomes all good and all bad, depending on what's happening and, and your mood and your triggering state. Pero yo no quiero traer cosas del pasado. Bien bueno, bien bueno. Y you Gino. Know, bueno, ustedes saben que eh, uh -huh. yo tengo un carácter difícil. Muy o sea, difícil. Muy difícil. Okay, so we're hearing more data. Y'all know that I have a difficult character. A friend says, yes, very difficult. We heard that from the other friend as well. Yo soy celópata con Gino. ¿Por qué? O sea, el problema es con la ex esposa. Uh -huh. Todo uh -huh. en su casa es sobre ella. Okay. La pelea que yo tuve con él fue porque él me dijo, pero es que los colores de la casa a mí me gustan y yo los escogí con ellas. I don't know, we didn't hear the full conversation, but she is spinning it in a way that I don't know if Gino would uh, endorse. So we hear her badmouthing Gino in a really sarcastic, angry way that if I were Jasmine's partner and I saw this on TV, I'd be like, wow, you're really, you're really ridiculing me <laughs> and you're spinning things in a way that is pretty hurtful and not accurate. So, but when you have these kinds of traumas and well, I'll say that everything, regardless of our trauma history is filtered through our emotional lens our emotional filter and we remember things not as they happened but as it felt and this is the way it feels to her it feels to her like he was just flaunting and saying ha 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 everything in my so, we'll rewind this because this is part of the condition that i don't know if she suffers from but the individuals who are on the spectrum they actually will be 100% convinced of certain things that have happened that never happened. So one of the things that she's saying right now is that Gino uh, uh, said to her, and it's factual, and there's no debate around that, that everything in Gino's house has to do with his ex-wife. That's what she said. That seems unlikely. I mean, the way she's painting it, it's like there are pictures of her of his ex, there are shrines to his to his ex, but from my memory of his house, it was a pretty sparse house that looked like a bachelor pad, but I don't know, so let's rewind that. Muy difícil. Yo soy celópata con Gino. ¿Por qué? O sea, el problema es con la ex esposa. 
Mm -hmm. Todo ah. en su casa es sobre ella. Okay. La pelea que yo tuve con... Everything in his house is about her. That's the way it feels to her. That's how it feels. Because clearly that's... And that would explain why she was so focused on it in the previous episode about the colors of the house and changing all that. That's how it feels to her. And that's important to understand. You could look at Jasmine and say, like, what's wrong with you? Why are you making that choice to interpret the world that way when that's not factual? That's not what's happening. Everything in his house is not about his ex. Uh, what Gino would say is, well, my ex lived with me in our house and we did pick out some things together and that when uh and now that i have those things i don't really associate them with my ex gino hasn't said these things but i'm guessing it's what he would say because he he doesn't really elaborate much but i'm guessing what he would say is these things are are not monuments to my ex-wife. They just happen to be things that we chose together, but they're things that I like. And I don't have the money to get rid of those things. I'm I'm really on a budget problem right now because I'm in between jobs. So for you to just say you want to get rid of everything, then we wouldn't have anything in the house. And I like these things. And and I'm guessing what Gina would say if he were given time and, and Jasmine were more reasonable, he'd say, I'm willing to change everything once we get the money, but but just don't interpret everything in the house as being a monument to my ex. But anyway, that's how it feels to her. Okay, that's important to understand is for her, if she, if she took a lie detector test, she probably would pass. And that's important to understand if you're in a relationship with someone like this, if you are someone like this, because you have to understand that our and this is true for everyone but particularly for people with traumas of relational traumas like this that just because something feels a certain way doesn't mean it is a certain way and if you operate from the way it feels all the time uh, then you could make a lot of mistakes and this is when i talk about differentiation the ability to differentiate between how something feels to you and how something quote unquote really is it's hard to know what objectively is reality because we're just trying to interpret things but I think a lot of people would say, Jasmine, you should probably look at that feeling. It feels like the house is a monument to his ex, but is it really? And it feels like Gino is still in love with his ex or something or is going to leave. So if I were to really take a guess at the foundation of all of this talk is Jasmine is walking around, as I said earlier, with a constant fear of being abandoned and a constant fear of, I am abandonable, abandonable and no one's gonna love me. And uh, and so it's just a, a constant thing. And when I've worked with people like this and I actually get them to a place where they can identify those feelings and I ask them how much stress are they walking around with baseline, they'll be like, I'm a five. Like best case scenario on my most relaxed day when people are loving me and everything's going well, I'm still a five. I'm extremely stressed out. I'm never a one. I've never been a one because I've never been allowed to relax. I'm, I'm always going from five to 10, five to 10 on a scale of one to 10 with 10 being the most stressed out. And uh, so when you have that constant feeling, you're looking for a reason for it. And so what she's doing, I'm guessing, is focusing on the decor. And he is saying, I think, one, I like those things. And two, I don't want you to hate my ex. There's no reason to hate her. She's a fine person. We, I'm no longer with her and you don't have to like her or dislike her, but don't badmouth her because she's a, she's a human being and she doesn't deserve people, anyone to talk about her like. And if you want to change the, uh, the situation, you know, so this is a really common situation that I've worked with throughout my career, by the way, in various different iterations. Los colores de la casa a mí me gustan y yo los escogí con ellas. Jasmine, estás loca. <laughs> sí, ¿verdad? <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine estaba buscando su príncipe azul y ella lo estaba buscando hasta debajo de las piedras. Y yo creo que Jasmine sí está enamorada de Gino, pero Jasmine es muy celosa. Okay, I, I didn't really understand because usually friends aren't this, I don't know, differentiated themselves. But I think what the friends are saying is, Jasmine, what? <laughs> like, I think that's what they're saying because they've seen it happen so often that even without hearing from Gino's side, they just know 
Is that what we're seeing right now? They just know that Jasmine is distorted? I think that's what they're saying, which is good on one level that because it always, almost always is the case that the French just go along with the narrative without any kind of evaluation. And I'm not saying we're always supposed to put push back on our friends, but we're not necessarily doing our friends any kind of benefit or helping them by just taking their distortions and just going with it. You can listen, you know, you can be like, wow, that sounds tough or wow, that it sounds like it's really hurting your feelings, something like that. But a lot of people on the show and in real life will be like, he's a toxic, grooming, narcissistic gaslighter. You need to get him. Extremadamente celoso. A menos que puedan manejar la situación, que ella cambie, que sea un poquito más madura, pueden llegar a tener problemas. Wow, I think these friends seem to have a real accurate view of what's happening. Now, can they be helpful to her? Can they say, we get it, Jasmine, but maybe there's some issues here. Maybe your jealousy is causing some distortions. And But we heard the friends say, until Jasmine matures, she's going to have the same problems, which I think a lot of us would agree with. <laughs> Okay, so the friends are trying to tell her to be uh, more nice, more tender, more understanding. I, I want to comment on what they're saying in terms of maturity. That's not the, how I would phrase it, what I would say is more aware of her traumas and her triggers and her emotions and her distortions in, you know, in, in the moment awareness is something that can take a lot of time because when, and I don't know if she has this condition, I don't know if she had these traumas growing up, but if for those who do, there's a whole uh, suite of problems that come along with this condition and, and other conditions like this that basically you don't know your emotions you're just you're just reacting to the most loud emotions which often are anger and hostility and pain and you're not aware of when you're ramping up you're not aware of why it's happening you're not aware of how it's distorting your thinking in the way that a three-year-old doesn't understand their emotions very well and, and a three-year-old doesn't understand why things are happening they're undifferentiated there's they're just reacting from you know where what their moods are and what their state is they they don't have uh, the ability yet uh, maybe a little bit to reflect and say like huh what's what's going on with me today uh, what you know what happened there what emotion am i feeling right now what do i need what's best for me uh, am i distorting my partner right now do i need to take a break uh, what how do, how do i assert myself these are very extremely complicated processes that if you don't have the foundation blocks built when you are zero through five, it's really hard to build those and you have to build them later in life through therapy. The other thing that people with uh, these sorts of conditions need to move forward is to have corrective experiences that basically teach them that other people can be trusted and that you are lovable. And you can only learn that viscerally over time, often with a therapist that specializes in these kinds of conditions like I do. It's Trooper. <laughs> I feel bad doing this, but this is my first and hopefully last divorce party. We just want to have fun. This is something that comes up in life. It is, I didn't know it was common in Panama, but in the United States, it's common I don't know about divorce parties. We don't really have a good protocol that's set for that. I, I think we should because divorce is really common. So, uh, but we do have around weddings, right? And there will be bachelor party, bachelorette parties that will involve strippers. And it's very important that, that both partners uh, consent to whatever's going to happen. So it's possible that Gino seeing this will be hurt by it and it's possible he'll be like yeah that's fine whatever or somewhere in between and if you're a friend so she didn't jasmine didn't hire the friends did 
the friends, if you're a friend and you're going to hire a stripper for your friend, the Jasmines of the world, you need to go to the Genos of the world and say, I'm going to hire a stripper. Is that okay with you? That's the ethical thing to do. You know, laughing and dancing and looking a little bit. <laughs> and if you're a Jasmine in this situation and you're like, well, I didn't plan for this, then you need to do what you can to mitigate any kind of pain that would happen to your partner around this. As I said, some people are totally fine with it. They're, there's, there's no jealousy there, and maybe you even kind of know that about your partner. But if there is, or there's a question mark, you don't want to risk it over something that you don't need to participate in, right? So uh, there are delicate ways, of uh, diplomatic ways of dealing with it when you're a Jasmine in the situation, be like, Okay, so before we get started, we haven't talked to Gino about this. In fact, let me text him and, and tell him that there's a stripper and uh, if it's okay. Or then you just say, no touching. You can strip, but I'm guessing that stripping is okay with Gino, but if you touch me, uh, that's that's not okay. Somehow, and it's, and it's not always the case, and of course, you don't want to be a party pooper, but you don't also want to have some kind of violation happen, right? There are expectations, particularly around bachelor parties, where it, it's like, come on, bro, you know, it's this is what we do. And it's like, well, why? <laughs> like, like what uh, We threaten the state of the relationship between two people for something that's just kind of like a laugh. Yeah, like there's, anyway. So now what a lot of people say, you know, it's not sexual, it's just a fun, silly thing. And yeah, I, I would agree with that. But again, we, we just wanna be careful about these kinds of things. It would make total sense that Gina would be hurt, but I don't know, uh, maybe he won't even find out. Getting ready, you know, there's a lot going on right now for us. She's probably having fun. At first I thought it was just going to be what we saw, but it seems to be escalating. Again, it, it could be argued that it's not actually sexual. It's just like a dance or something. But, uh, I mean, I, and of course, I'm sure a lot of you were thinking, well, wait, Jasmine, you're talking about Gino's decor of his house and having a total meltdown around that. And you're doing this in the present while he's alone in the hotel room when you said no men can be there when it looks like there's a man there. So double standard anywhere? <laughs> I don't know. It's moments like this where I think, do we need to see it? Couldn't we just have heard a summary of it? I don't know. Uh, but I guess it's an entertainment TV show, so that's the whole point. My friends brought the stripper I didn't know was in shock. You know, no problem. Normal. Are you mad at me? I, you know, I mean, I don't like it. They come over there intoxicated and immediately show him what looks to be the whole video. He looks genuinely upset and taken aback. He's not saying anything. Jasmine asks, are you mad at me? He says, well, I don't like it. That's all he's saying. And they just like, it's normal, it's just dancing. It's not normal, it's not just dancing. <laughs> that was not dancing. Me and my wife go dancing. <laughs> that was not dancing, that was simulated sex. That was, I mean, you could argue it's a version of dancing that's simulated sex. And you are participating. It'd be one thing if it was just, a quick lap dance, but you know, that was extremely involved. She was putting hands on and seemingly enjoying herself. And like I said previously, some people would be okay with that. Some Genos would be like, yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? I go to strip clubs sometimes as well, it's fine. 
but a lot of people wouldn't be okay with that. Imagine what Jasmine would do if she saw such a video of Gino doing something like that. So, yeah, and I feel bad for him, honestly. Está enojado, ¿verdad? Porque está rojo. Vamos. Oh. Sí. Jasmine should have never had a stripper at this party to begin with. But, you know, why are why are her friends showing me a video of Jasmine with a stripper? What's the point of that? Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting hearing Gino's reaction. It's like a lot of the things that all of us would say. It's like, well, wait, so you got a stripper, all right, but then you immediately sh videotape the whole thing and you show him the whole video as soon as you can. Who does that? Niña, se cuidan. Bye, bye. Bye. Gracias por la fiesta. Bye. Bye. I mean, similar to the penis soup that Corey ate from his sisters-in-law, I believe it, they were sisters-in-law, that you just have to wonder if you're Gino. So was this whole thing an elaborate campaign to hurt my feelings? Because you got the stripper, you encouraged the whole thing, and then as soon as you could, you showed, you ran over here, it seems like, and immediately showed me the video. Is that the whole thing here? And it, it feels bad. It feels like people are against you. It's hurtful. Baby, your mom. Well, why is your friend showing me video, uh, videos of <laughs> Why can't you guys just keep it a secret? Why do you have to sh like because put it in my face? Were... Yeah, it's like why you could have just not said anything or you could have not put it in my face. And why is everyone laughing all the time at me? And she's like, well, because we're drunk. No, <laughs> I, a lot of people have been drunk and they don't necessarily do something. I mean, there was a mission. It was premeditated, perhaps, I don't know. But, you know, there was a mission there. And there's this, it's interesting that Jasmine, are you mad? Are you mad? This like, I hope you're mad, or I expect you to be mad, or I I want you to be, I don't know what's happening. Well, because he doesn't seem mad. He seems hurt. He seems upset. You're not doing anything bad. How do you think it makes me feel to see some guy dancing all well, over Well, I here? had fun. I don't know that horse body. I might have never had a stripper in my life. How would you feel if I showed you a video? Yeah, I mean, if you're differentiated and you are Jasmine, you would say, well, yeah, I would be really hurt. That's a good point. I would be not only hurt, but I would be extremely hostile. It would trigger all my abandonment traumas and I'd be going ballistic right now. So. Good point, Gino. Let's see what she says. Some hot babe all over me, shoving her in my face and rubbing her ass all over my lap. How would you feel? Would you like it? No. So why do you do it to me? I'm sorry. My goodness, I did not expect that to happen. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, uh, we shouldn't have ever been in this position to begin with, but here's we here we are, and so it's good that Jasmine actually did what I mockingly thought would never happen, and she is seeing his sadness. And good on him for uh, you know s staying in the primary feeling, which is sadness. It hurts his feelings. He's not getting angry. We see no anger from him. Maybe a slight tinge in his tone, but. But we see sadness. We see him on the verge of tears. We see him defeated. And that's the primary emotion. A lot of men in particular, but really people of all genders, but men in particular with toxic masculinity will always turn that into anger or withdrawal. But he's not doing that. So it gives her an opportunity to see something maybe she's not used to, which is someone just being like, I don't know, just really hurt my feelings and without getting provoked, which seemed to be the point. I don't know. And she's seeing it, and she's empathizing with it, and she's apologizing. Let's see if she can fully apologize. So you're not gonna do it again, right? No. It's great to hear Jasmine apologize to me for a change, but the way that Jasmine handled the situation with the stripper, it was kinda immature. Um, yeah, I mean, on one hand, you're thinking, oh, well, wow, thanks for apologizing. 
On the other hand, it's like, how did we even get here? <laughs> you could have easily won, just not put hands on. I mean, you were fully participatory. You were getting into it. You, you were, once the stripper was in there, okay, like you didn't plan it, that's not on you. But when you start putting hands on, when you start going along with simulated sexual acts, that's on you. And why did you even do that? And then you immediately come over here and shove, shove, shove the, like, why did all that happen in the first place? All right, well, I wanna thank everyone who's liked this video or subscribed, super cool of you. Every few weeks I look at those stats and I'm like, do people still like what I'm doing? <laughs> and it's nice to get that feedback. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it, you really, really do.